is the fastest growing restoration in the history of dentistry. And we really have two different materials or two applications for this. The first one would be what we call the KDZ Bruxer. Now, this material is the strongest all ceramic material we have. The flexural strength, and I'll talk a little bit about flexural strength now. Imagine if we had two little sawhorses. We put a bar of ceramic across that. So this would be ceramic. We apply a force. How much force would it take before this ceramic broke? That's flexural strength. The flexural strength of our KDZ Bruxer is about 1,000 to 1,200 megapascals. Now, to give you a relationship between that and a PFM, the ceramic that we put on every PFM, everyone you've done and I've done, has a flexural strength of only 100. So you can see that our KDZ Bruxer has a flexural strength, and I'm going to relate flexural strength to potential durability of the material, because a patient bites down on a functional cusp, ventral fossa, um, let's say a premolar as they go through lateral and they hit against that, it could be a working or balancing interference. Our KDZ Bruxer is 10 times stronger than a PFM. Very, very cool. Now the KDZ Bruxer, the limitation, however, is it's kind of opaque. So we're going to limit it to posterior applications. So where I do a KDZ Bruxer are on molars, especially with limited occlusal clearance. We can actually make these KD Bru KDZ Bruxers 0.5 millimeters occlusal reduction, uh, the thinness on the occlusal. The second time that we use this is as a bridge in posterior. Again, we have a flexural strength of 1,000 to 1,500 megapascals. And so when we're doing a multi-unit bridge in the posterior, closest to the hinge axis, we want to make sure that we use the strongest material possible.